Nico, it's Roman. Let's go bowling. Warning, this program is entirely fictional and made by a sole Canadian man. All characters and events in the show, including the host, even those that are based on real people, are entirely fictional. The following program contains mature subject matter. Viewer discretion is advised. America. The land of the free. Home of the brave. And the stupid. And the criminally insane. The United States has seen its fair share of gangbangers, mobsters, and psychotics who've roamed our beloved streets causing untold chaos, destruction, and corruption. Tonight, on the season 4 premiere of Grand Theft Auto Biographies. Optimism? gambling addictions, and a lot of bowling. Let's go bowling! Tonight we will examine the life of an immigrant who embraced the American mentality more wholeheartedly than most people who grew up in the worst city in America. We will follow the story of a man motivated by love, a love for women, a love for luxury, and of course, a love for bowling, and his infamous cousin that made him worth covering to begin with. We will see broken homes and dreams crushed. We will see desperation and the struggle to survive in America as a low-income migrant and we will see a blind, perhaps enviable, optimism that held this band together through some truly traumatic experiences. Join me as we follow the life and times of Roman Bellic. This video is brought to you by my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. By supporting the channel for less than $2 American a month, you can get early access to videos, the ability to download episodes, and nearly 100 original music tracks, many of which are extended versions of the tracks that are on streaming services. A very special thank you to my executive producer tier patrons, Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Aussie, Die Castinator, Chuck K45, and Miles Garrett. All of you are amazing, and your support is something I truly can't express my gratitude for fully. Thank you so much. Today's episode is sponsored in part by my executive producers Ezra Hambrick, Mason Collin, Chuck K45, and Die Castinator. You can check out Ezra's YouTube channel, Scott Games 99 where they play games such as NHL and MLB, and story-based games like the Red Dead Redemption series, with plenty more story-based games to come soon. Mason Collin's podcast channel, We're About Everything, where they discuss, well, everything from zombie apocalypses to game remasters and more. Chuck K45's channel, who's working on setting up a channel all about buying farm equipment and fixing it up and then starting a new farm from scratch, and Diecastinator's channel, where they examine, review, and discuss all things Diecast, from the history of the hobby to rare models, and much more with new videos basically every day in addition to buying and selling and trading the Diecast cars. All links in the description, and a very big thank you to all of my patrons. Your support is literally helping me to keep the lights on, so from the bottom of my little black heart, thank you all so very much. Support the channel by showing my executive producers some love, or sign up yourself today. And now, back to the video. Our story tonight begins in a country that technically no longer exists, Yugoslavia in the late 1970s. Roman's parents, whose names we could not confirm in our investigations, had him roughly a decade before the collapse of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, around the same time that the Soviet Union fell. As a result, much of Roman's childhood was characterized by both poverty, political instability, and a constant threat of conflict boiling over into civilian life. Despite these things though, or perhaps because of them, young Roman would develop a strong and dark sense of humor, and make it his life's mission to find the humor in nearly every, often depressing, situation that life seemed to throw at him. Roman's father, along with his uncle, was a violent, abusive, and volatile drunk. According to both Roman and his first cousin Nico, both of them would be regularly beaten by their fathers, but Roman's mother would by and large raise both of the boys. By all accounts, Roman's mother was a loving and strong-spirited woman who both Roman and Nico admired very much, and despite Nico's own mother trying her best to raise her own son, Nico would spend a lot of his time with Roman as a child. As a result, 
he would develop a strong bond with Nico, and the two would become thick as thieves until age brought an awareness of the brewing conflicts that surrounded them. By age 14, Roman and Nico would bear witness to the chaos and conflict of the Yugoslav Wars, and though Roman would manage to avoid being forced into service for his country, Nico would enlist and begin fighting in the deadly conflict, which would last for nearly a decade. By 1998, Roman's mother had saved up enough money to get her son out of the country, and though she'd wanted to send Nico with him, he would still be actively serving in the ongoing war. And so, at age 21, Roman would immigrate to the United States of America with the help of his mother, and although she would pay for him to get out, he would effectively start his new life in America with nothing. It wouldn't discourage him though, as Roman had by this time already developed his characteristic optimism, which would see him through some of the bleakest moments in his life, many of which were still to come. Roman would settle in Liberty City. To people like him who had seen the horrors of war firsthand, even as a civilian, it was the shining beacon of the land of opportunity. But to much of the world, and more so much of the country it was a part of, it was the worst place in America. Roman would waste no time in grinding his way to the top that he'd dreamed of, likely working as a cab driver himself first for several years, before finally saving up enough money of his own to buy two Esperanto taxis and a small cab depot in Hove Beach, a little slice of Eastern Europe in Broker. Though still struggling to achieve the dream, Roman would never, even for a moment, stop dreaming, even when he was forced to sleep under his desk at the depot for over a year, before finally being able to afford a small bachelor apartment nearby. While he struggled to stay alive and make it big in America, Roman would continuously keep in contact with his cousin Nico back home. He would learn bits and pieces of Nico's time during and after the Yugoslav Wars and his time in the Merchant Navy, but he would be less than honest about his own level of success in his many emails to his cousin. Roman would boast of frequently sleeping with many different women, owning 15 sports cars, and a luxury condo with four hot tubs, while in reality barely scraping by, constantly encouraging Nico to come and join him in America, despite the reality of his financial situation. Although many things in Roman's life would change when he moved to America, one thing that certainly wouldn't change would be his lust for women and his bombastic, charismatic approach to relationships, which at least according to him, saw him sleeping with quite a few women for a man not considered conventionally attractive. He would also quite frequently get drunk to the point of nearly passing out, and whenever given the opportunity, attend whatever parties that he could find the time for outside of work, where he would presumably meet many of these women. Though it wouldn't quite be the model-on-each-arm lifestyle that he'd imagined, he would still manage to eventually charm his way into a serious relationship with one Mallory Bardaz, after hiring her to be the receptionist for his cab depot, though it isn't actually entirely clear when their relationship started or under what circumstances, as it's also possible that they began dating before she started working for him. Eventually, Roman would actually manage to convince Nico to take him up on his offer, Though more accurately, Nico would run into a variety of his own issues and realize that coming to live with Roman might also be the perfect opportunity to claim revenge on someone that he believed to be hiding in Liberty City. Sometime in 2008, after several months aboard a freighter, Nico would arrive in Liberty to join his cousin, and things would only get worse. With Nico now finally joining him in America, Roman would enthusiastically meet him at the docks and broker as he got off the freighter, and inevitably be forced to tell his cousin the truth. That he was not in fact living the American dream as Nico saw it, but instead laboring away in the meat grinder in an American nightmare, one which seemed to Nico frighteningly similar to what he left behind in the old country. <laughs> come in, come in! Make yourself at home, what's mine is yours! Got him! <laughs> Little bastard, if he paid some rent, I wouldn't care. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, that's not nice. Ah, oh, cousin. It's so good to see you. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, I need to change anyway. <sighs> so. So. So, so you full of crap or what? What? Uh, where's luxury condo? Where's sports car? 
Where's Barbara with big titties and Stephanie who sucks like a vacuum? What are you talking about? In your letters to my mother. In your letters to me. All I hear about is Mr. Big, Mr. Roman, living the American dream. Sports cars, condos, women, money, the beach. Opportunity. I come here, and the only thing big about your life is the cockroaches. <laughs> That's right. I got the best cockroaches, I got the best dirt. <laughs> Screw you, you idiot. <laughs> OK, I am an idiot, but you must admit, I have the best line in bullshit you ever heard. Yeah, this I know, asshole. But here, <sighs> all I needed was one good guy. One good guy I could do well, not Take over the world, but uh, do okay. Now maybe I have this. But what about you? What about you, cousin? What? What about me? Well, uh, why you live home after all this time? First I hear you are uh, running with the wrong kind. Then I hear you join the merchant navy. Now you're here. You never tell me anything. <laughs> no. What do you mean, no? No, I never tell you anything. Another time. Ooh, mystery man. Strange and exotic sailor. What happened? Did your captain make you pregnant? <laughs> Screw you! <laughs> no, no, it's nothing like that. The ships were fine. It was before that. Two things. You remember, during the war, we did some bad things. And bad things happened to us. <laughs> war is where the young and stupid are tricked by the old and bitter into killing each other. I was very young and very angry. Maybe that is no excuse. Roman? Roman! Ah! Are you sleeping, you fat no, fuck? No Come on! What's the time? Shit, I've got to get the cab back. It's on the shift. <laughs> ah! Oh, Jesus! Tastes Wrong. like a rat shot in it! Nico, Jeez. I've got to run. Uh, come well, meet me at the cab office. It's easy. Out about? the door, turn left, then the first I left of the diner, go down I'm one block and turn right on Iroquois. Then walk all the way down, and we're right there on the left on the corner of Cisco about, Street. Man. It's really flash. We got lots of TDs and some incredible molders. Uh, Nico, give me a hug. Good to have you here, cousin. I've got something for you. Oh, damn. Damn, damn, damn. Uh, yes, Vlad. Uh, sorry. No, forgive me, okay? No, no, please don't cut my cock off. Eh? Okay, okay but yes. Uh, uh, okay. In fact, on his very first day in America, Nico would be forced to rescue Roman from a group of Albanian loan sharks that he was in debt to, likely due to another of the vices that Roman had developed while living stateside: gambling, and lots of it. Roman's day-to-day -day would consist of either operating dispatch from the depot office or driving around doing fares himself the occasional date with Mallory, and then a whole lot of drinking and gambling, and that was about it. Though Roman's drinking was already bad enough, his gambling would consistently land him in hot water, with one of the many groups prepared to lend out money to the desperate, such as the Albanians who were actively trying to track him down, or the Russian mobsters who supposedly provided his depot with protection. Soon enough though, Nico would also get to meet these Russian mobsters, primarily the enforcer who controlled much of the Hove Beach area, Vladimir Glebov, or simply Vlad. Come on, Hattie. Forget about the fat sir. Oh, Vlad's shut up. But he's a serf, and you're a countess. Uh, talking about serfs. Oh, hey, Nico. Where's Rome? <laughs> Good question. Hey, Yoko, your dumb cousin isn't here. Go get me a coffee. What? Get me a fucking coffee! Come on, I'll get you one. What? You keep staring at me. I'll burst one of your eyeballs. Gorgeous, this guy's a fucking creep. Give him a break. He's new in the country. I can see that. Did you walk here from 1985? Yeah. Excellent. Now stop fucking staring at me. I mean, I know I'm good looking and everything, but come on. Uh, hey, Mallory. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. <laughs> About time. Vlad, Vladdy boy, what's going on? Roman, Roman boy, you tell me what's going on. That's aftershave, what is that, sex pest? No, <laughs> it's where is my fucking money? I, I had it, I, I had some of it. Then those Albanians you said you would deal with came and smashed my computer. So it's my fault? I, I didn't say that. Good. 
Anyway, Nico dealt with them. Broke Darden's arm. Then we'd have a couple more. Then we'd teach them a real lesson. <laughs> Is that so? I tell you what. While you don't pay, maybe you and Nico can do me few favors. Sure. <laughs> Good. Why not? Later, Vlad. What? The phone's ringing. Hey. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I can do it. My cousin will do it. Yes, he can drive. No, he's not a cop. His name is Nico. You'll be right over. Nico, sorry to ask, cousin. Can you go pick up Jermaine, one of my regulars? He's over on Rotterdam Hill on Mohawk Avenue? Whatever. What was this all about? Nico came in looking for you and Vlad told him to get him a fucking coffee and Nico didn't want to. Coffee? What was he thinking? I know. Thanks to his cab business, Roman would have an abundance of opportunities to meet new people and make connections, though. Despite the attitude that one might expect from a man in his situation, he would never cease to be an optimistic, charismatic smooth talker, no matter how hopeless things might seem, and would, as a result, make many friends across Mostly Broker, who would also be gainful opportunities for Nico to find work doing what he did best. Headed to town! I don't give a fuck if the bridge is busy! You're a cab driver! Hey! Hello, Roman Bellic Enterprises. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Bellic is stepped away from his office. Can I take a message? Okay, great. No, I'm not gay. Yes, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell him. Car 7, head to South Slopes. Come on, where are you, Mohammed? Hello, Roman Bellic's office. Shit, fucking battery. This is chaos. Capitalism is a dirty business. Yeah? Like war? Not exactly. No, maybe not. When are you going to tell me properly about what happened? I'm not going to judge you. Uh, when you got time. There, I have time. Another time. Can I help? Okay, yes. Go pick up my friend little Jacob. He's a good man. Likes to smoke a bit. Look after him. He's on Oneida Avenue in South Slopes. And Nico, man, we should talk sometime. Oh. I'm a good listener. Whatever, man. Mohammed, what the fuck? Are... Oh, Miss Weinstock. No, no, not you. I, I, what can I do for you today? But even with friends across the city like Jermaine and Jacob, and a near endless supply of arguably blind optimism, Roman would be about to face one of the most stressful situations of his life since his departure from Serbia. Sometime prior to Nico's arrival in Liberty City, Vlad would begin seducing Roman's new girlfriend, Mallory, and at some unknown point, the two would have a full-on affair behind Roman's back. Something Nico strongly suspected was happening that he kept from Roman, believing his free-spirited, skirt-chasing cousin would hardly care, and was likely cheating on Mallory himself. Hey, what's wrong? Hey, cousin. Bullshit. What's bullshit? Mallory. Oh... What about her? I like her. I really like her. But you keep messing around with other women. Yeah... No! I think she's messing around with Vlad. I saw his car parked outside her place the other day. Yeah... You knew? I had suspicions. You fucking knew? What was I going to say? You knew my woman was banging this war dog and you didn't do anything? I didn't, didn't say anything? I didn't know. You're an asshole, Nico Belik! A disloyal user! After what I did for you, you dick! You fucking dick! I'm sorry! Screw you! Alright, so you want me to deal with it right now? No. Sit down. No! I'm not going to stand here and have you call me disloyal. You might let some Russian asswipe bang your woman, but I won't. But you fucking did! That was before I knew you cared! You always were a hypocrite. Nico! Wait! Don't do anything stupid! Wait for me! But to Nico's surprise, Roman had truly fallen in love with Mallory, and had, according to him, remained loyal to her the entire time they'd been together, something that was particularly uncharacteristic of him. After being labeled disloyal for keeping his suspicions of the affair from Roman, Nico would storm out of the cab depot and head straight for Comrade's bar, where Vlad did most of his business and his drinking. Get me the drink. Anyway. Yeah, go ahead. Prekapusto. 
Зачем нужно жрать капусту, если есть картошка? Эй! Картошка! Bloody boy! I'd like a word with you. What are you doing here? Did I summon you? Boy, I told you to stay away from Mallory. Ah, go away! And now Roman is upset. Oh, Roman is upset. Excuse me. Do you think I give a fuck, peasant? Oh, there he is. Hey, Fatty, I'm so sorry you're so upset. Oh, poor fucking ho. <laughs> hey, Vlad, can't oh, we just talk about this? <laughs> you stay away from Mallory. I must be hearing things. I could have sworn for a minute this ratty little yokel told me what to do. <laughs> Did you hear that, boy? Yeah. Now, get them out of here. Come on. Come on. Being no stranger to violence or a thirst for revenge, Nico would drag Roman into a deadly conflict killing or at the very least incapacitating several of Vlad's men before chasing him out of the bar across Hove Beach to a vacant lot on the eastern shore of the Humboldt River. My friends will find you! You were the stupid one, Vladdy boy. Nobody fucks with my family. Ah, you're a big boy, Vladdy. Nico! Nico! Ah. Well, I guess this is over. What have you done? What does it look like? We're dead! No, he's dead. We're fine. He has powerful friends. Serious people. I told you to be calm, you all did it jump! I am calm. He tried to kill us. He screwed your girlfriend. What do you expect? I give him a massage? Shit! 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 When I was in the army, we were going on a mission to ambush a squad who had killed a lot of innocent people. They were our enemies, but we never did it. There were 15 of us, all boys from the village. But one of us betrayed the group. It was a setup for money. Twelve people died, three escaped. I know the traitor was not me. So for ten years, I've been searching for the other two. One of them leaves here. Why are you telling me this now? Do you always get sentimental after you kill people? You kept asking. Wonderful! You're here on some revenge mission for something that happened ten years ago, and you don't care whose life you ruin in a way! No! Well, what? I don't know. I just want to know why they did it. Well, right now I don't think you're going to find out. Let's hide the body, at least for a while. Put him in the river. If you're fast, it's going to kill us! Shit! We should get out of here. You go. I'll catch up with you later. Following Nico's murder of Vladimir Glebov, Roman would hide out in his Hove Beach apartment and within days become hyper-paranoid that Vlad's bosses would seek swift and deadly retribution for Nico's actions. While sitting at home, he would receive several phone calls with no one on the other end of the line and eventually become so terrified that he was going to be killed that he hid himself in a dumpster just off of Tulsa Street, ironically just down the street from one of the Russian Mafia's biggest fronts, the Perestroika Cabaret Club. Well, as it turned out, for once, Roman's paranoia had been completely justified, and by the end of that day, he would be tied to a chair in the basement of one of the most powerful Russian mobsters in the city, Mikhail Faustin. Unable to keep his cool like Nico with his years of experiencing such barbaric treatment or dishing it out himself during his time in war, Roman would have a full-on panic attack and eventually piss off Faustin enough that he would be shot in the stomach. 
While Nico worked off the debt that the two men had accrued in Faustin's eyes by killing Vlad, Roman would be patched up thanks to the slightly more sympathetic second-in-command for the Faustin Bratva, Dmitry Raskolov. Uh, 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 Wake up! <laughs> we had to gag him to stop the screaming. You shouldn't have brought them here, Andrei. Why not? You've been a bad boy, Mr. Balkan. And the boss is not happy. Oh, no. <laughs> Shit, my pants. Not yet, but you will. Who are you working for? Uh, my cousin, Roman. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. That's not good enough. I'm gonna saw off your fucking arm. Speak! Okay, okay. You're dead like sit up the ass. What do you want me to say, huh? <laughs> Very funny. Do you think you're so smart? No! I'm tied up in the basement a long way from home, while some ape threatens me with a hacksaw. So no, I'm not that smart. Shut the fuck up! My fucking wife is watching television! Good lord. What are you doing? Nothing. I mean... I was finding out who he is. And? Who is he? He is his cousin. You were about to cut up some guy in my house, making all that noise to find out he's his cousin. Where did you find this idiot? He was a friend of your sergeant when we were in Vladivostok. He's an imbecile. So, Nico Bellic, you think it's okay to kill my employees? If he is an asshole, yes. Do it! Uh, I agree. Mikhail! As I look at me like I'm a piece of shit. Bozo moi. Now listen, Nico Bellic. You are very lucky Blood was an idiot. The only reason I keep him around is because I fucked his sister. Look at me. You owe me. I got some dickheads in my neighborhood trying to run a shipment, yeah? And we found a buyer for the TVs. Yes, a buyer. But you've got to get them for us so we can make the sale. Can you untie Roman? Хорошо. Help! Shut up, Help! Shut up! Help! Roman, shut up! Shut up! Roman, shut up! Shut up! Roman, shut up! 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 You better get those screens soon! Or I will personally pull your cousin's stitches out, one by one, and watch his guts spill onto the floor! Clean this shit up! Listen, we'll take care of your cousin, but you better get the police car. And then you call me! Roman! Roman! Go! 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 I, I'll take care of him! Fuck! Thankfully for Roman, Nico would be a perfect employee for the Russians and managed to get the job done quickly and efficiently enough that both his and Roman's lives would be spared, with Nico now working directly under Faustin while Roman healed from his injuries. Eventually, quicker than you might expect, Roman would be back on his feet and prepared to jump right back into the scramble for the American dream. With Nico now earning considerably more money working for Faustin, Roman would continue and even escalate his gambling addiction, spending time not only in illegal card games at shady clubs, but also gambling online, and at least from Nico's perspective, wasting nearly all the money that he was earning for them to try and get out of Hove Beach one day. Roman would also continue to meet new people, including a steroid junkie and car enthusiast, Brucey Kibbutz, who would also go on to be a source of income for the cousins through Nico, thanks to his many criminal talents. Nico, this is Brucey. We met online. Oh, loveme.net? <laughs> no. In a dark corner, doing dark deeds. We're both players, my friend. Players. VIP. For real. Classy. But also sexy. Hmm. That's how I like my women. I work at it, so they should too, right? Yeah. yeah. What is he talking about? Bruce is a dreamer. Uh -huh. He understands my vision. <laughs> oh, so he's an idiot. Hey! <laughs> Screw you! Listen, man, you should try going online. Uh, I know how to go on the line. I just haven't done it here. <laughs> of course. Technophobe. Ludite. We gotta get you online. It's a world of opportunities. Such as? Uh, all kinds of things. 
Yesterday, I was online and I discovered a blog about women who don't like to shave. That's pretty important. Listen, I promised Brucey I'd go out with him. Can you go out and get it sorted? Uh, okay. Go to Twat and register on one of the PCs there. A pretty girl is expecting you. I'm bored of not being able to email your cousin, and the family keeps sending me news for you. Brucey, yeah, stop but... exercising. Okay. Let's put some bitches to the sword. VIP style, come on! He's a cool guy. Ровно до многу. Да добијам преку интернет. Мислиш да сум лут? But despite keeping up with his optimism, Roman would have no idea just how bad things were about to get. And this time, it was essentially inarguable that it was largely the fault of his cousin Nico. With Vlad's death and Mikhail Faustin's ever-accelerating temper, Faustin's second-in-command, Dmitry Raskolov, would in some capacity begin planning a betrayal that would leave him the leader of the Faustin Bratva and the Bella cousins either dead or in hiding. Following Nico's murder of another Russian mobster's son, Lenny Petrovic, Dmitry would have the perfect excuse to hire Nico to kill Faustin for him, allowing Dmitry to take over as the new leader, Kenny Petrovic to get his revenge for the death of his son, and all the evidence of his betrayal to be erased, with Dmitry's plans to kill Nico and Roman shortly after. Roman! Roman, where are you? In here! I'm stuck! Let me out! Shit, man! <sighs> what are you doing in there? I got scared. People started calling the house and hanging up. You weren't answering your phone, what happened? We've got a big problem. Dimitri was not a man of his word. So we're dead? More or less. Everything was fine before yes, you. Yes. Fine, and now this? Thank you. Thanks a lot! It's Vini. Nevidno. What's done is done. Yes. But there's a bigger problem. What? That guy I owed money to, Bulgarin. Yes. Guy in Europe, who lives by the Adriatic. Yeah, yeah, he's here now. Great. I'm sorry. I've ruined your life. No, don't be like that. We, we can find a way out of this. Bunch of idiot Russians. I will kill every one of them. No, that's exactly what you won't do. We don't have time for revenge. We can't afford it. What can we afford? Uh, we can lay low and start over. Come on, let's go back to the apartment. Not long after, the cousins would find Roman's apartment and business up in flames, along with the engagement ring that Roman had planned to present to Mallory. And it seemed to Nico that things couldn't possibly get any worse. And yet his cousin Roman somehow remained optimistic. Not so bad. <laughs> I mean, I don't think we'll be impressing women with our wonderful hot tub, but uh, this looks okay. Yes, great. Come on, what's, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? Where should I start? All right, I'll start with you. What's wrong with you? Fifteen minutes ago, you were cowering in fear because you didn't know what was going to happen. Now, you know everything is shit, and you're going to be killed, and you're all cheerful. I don't get it. I guess I'm an optimist. An idiot, not an optimist. I was bored of Broker anyway. I'm glad you turned up and made some Russian killers burn down my home and business. Oh, yeah, thanks, Nico. Thanks a bunch. Is that better? March! <sighs> Thank God you're okay. Mwah. Mwah. Both of you. We're fucked. We're broke and on the run. No, I'm from up here, Nico. I know a bunch of people who might be able to help out. Why don't you come and meet me at the community center later on? I gotta go to work. Bye, Papi. And have a shower. You smell a little, um, mature. So, I guess we start again. Sure. I'm going out.
Now living out of a new apartment thanks to Mallory's connections in Bohan, Roman would almost immediately after losing practically everything return to gambling, socializing, and just generally being positive about how things would turn out for him, occasionally to the annoyance of his much more cynical cousin Nico. Despite never truly participating in violence himself, Roman would also, through men like little Jacob Hughes and Brucey Kibbutz, find himself adjacent to, or even an accomplice to, various crimes planned in his presence, some of which he even actively contributed to, such as Nico's murder of Tom Revis for Brucey. Hey, man. Hey, guys. Sexy. Hey! Hit me! What? Hit me! Come on! Oh! Nico, you wanna go on a date? Uh... Come on, what's wrong with you? Okay, who is she? That's the thing, it's a guy. Fuck you. No, dude, listen! The cousin of that guy you killed, Lyle Revis, owes me a lot of money, and the dick won't pay. Instead he said he's gonna have me kill that bitch. Hiya! Brucey, you got to chill. For real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now listen, NB, this guy isn't hiding, but he's a serious... He's a serious cockhound. Oh, so you think of me? No, but the guy knows me, and I don't think anyone would date that fat slob. So, I'm just doing your profile. All right, let me see. I am a vulnerable guy who needs to be held by big, strong arms? <laughs> yeah. You got to be kidding me! <laughs> I knew we should have made him a giver, not a taker, Brucey. Oh, shut up! <laughs> now listen, Nikki. I need you. And I will pay heavily for this. Okay. And Roman, cousin, you're a dick. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Nikki! <laughs> Shit. But Roman's biggest and most detrimental vice would remain his gambling addiction. Even after being essentially marked for death by one of the most dangerous criminal organizations in the city, Roman would continue to attend backroom gambling games, often owned by the very Russians who were hunting him down. Eventually, this carelessness would result in his being kidnapped by the Russians, now taking orders directly from Dmitry Raskolov. While playing a card game at the very same club where he'd nearly been done in by the Albanians, he would be assaulted by two bikers, Johnny Klebitz of the Lost MC, and Melk, last name unknown, of the Uptown Riders. Hello. Hey, old man, how you doing? <laughs> Please, gentlemen. The men in there just took my money. I can't get robbed twice in one day. What do you want, the shirt off my back? Come on! We're not robbing you, we're taking you. Oh, oh, my... The chips have been cast, Chubby. <laughs> no! Wait! Get in there! Somebody! Shut stop. up! Shut your hell, badass! Somebody looking for a fat slav with a bladder problem? So, this is Roman <laughs> Bellic? <laughs> Not such a tough guy, eh? What is all this fuss about his cousin? Listen, buddy. Ashley's square with you now. So do me a favor. Go easy on the fat man. I've seen some of the bodies you people drop in the humble. Easy, Johnny. You saw the shit stands in the back seat. He's scared enough. What happens to this shithead is none of your concern. You come with me. Shit, Johnny. Yo, I gotta bounce. Be Later. easy, man. Soiling himself along the way, at least according to the bikers, Roman would be delivered to the warehouse held by Raskolov's men in the north of Bohan, and held on the top floor as bait for his cousin Nico. Unfortunately for all of the Russian mobsters, but quite fortunately for Roman, Nico Bellic was not a man who should be underestimated, especially when it came to his shootout. I don't want to die, Nico! Nico would kill every single Russian gangster standing between him and Roman, and eventually rescue his cousin, fleeing back to their new Bohan apartment to discuss exactly what they were going to do about their growing Russian problem. Man, this is out of control. I know. What are we going to do? I don't know. We're going to die. I don't want to die, man, not like this. How would you like to die? Having a threesome on my 100th birthday? I don't fucking know. I'm scared, you cold bastard. What are we going to do? I'm not cold. You're cold. All you care about is revenge and getting your own way. And all you care about is money and gambling it away on the internet. Oh, isn't America great? I get to sit in front of a computer and play Mr. Rich Man and get into debt with crooks. Okay, I messed up. I know I did. I thought things would be different. I, I don't understand this place so good. Oh, man, what are we going to do? 
Stop sitting in front of the computer gambling our money. Stop uh, getting into illegal card games. Stop spending all our money. Yes. Thank you. And stop thinking about the Russians. Men, we just need to disappear as far as they're concerned. Disappear! Okay, okay. But I want Florian and Darko. I need to know what happened. Give me that. Fine. But leave the Russians alone. I was not the one gambling in their private club. I didn't know! I give a guy a break! Okay! Okay. Okay. I'm going to clean up. I have a nasty feeling I had a bit of an accident back there. And Nico. What? Thanks. And although Roman would passively agree to try and stop gambling away all of the money that Nico was earning, he would in fact do no such thing, and even accelerate the pace and heft of his bets in an ever-increasing desperation to achieve this elusive American dream. Amazingly though, Roman would eventually hit a hot streak, and actually win enough money to not only reopen his cab depot, but to upgrade his fleet of Esperantos to cavalcade SUVs, and purchase a swanky apartment penthouse for him and Nico on Algonquin Island, and of course, buying himself plenty of new expensive clothes. He would by this time also begin frequenting the increasingly popular Algonquin nightclub Mason at 9 with Brucey, and continue to party as hard as his increasingly American physique would allow for, while his cousin Nico made bigger and bigger moves. Okay, if we walk in confident, we have a good time. <laughs> okay. Hey, you on the list? Yes. No. Yes. No. Then you're not coming in. Oh, wait a minute, man. We're relatively important people. We're going in, bro. I don't give a fuck who you think you are. You're not coming in. Come on, man. I'm a VIP. We, we come here all the time. Hey, Des. Hey, man. Tony, I ain't seen him. Hey, man. Luis. Bro, can you get us in? Hey, Brucey. Yeah, sure. Uh, Tessie, take care of them. Oh, thanks, oh. man. Okay, keep it cool. Keep it cool. Man, I'm no, going to no, see no, some vagina tonight. You walked in with one, bro. What? Never mind, man. Hey, so I'm going to go get the drinks. Okay. I think. Okay, good evening, my friend. How are you? See, it's me. Yes, you okay? So I'm good? I'm good? Yes, <laughs> okay. Ladies, hide your titties. Eventually, Roman would learn that Nico finally located one of the two men that he was searching for, who had betrayed his squad back during the war, Florian Kravich, and had managed to track him down to a condo in Algonquin. Loving his cousin and wishing to be there for him during this potentially difficult situation, Roman would accompany Nico to Florian's condo, and the three would have a brief and unexpected reunion as Nico came to realize that it was not in fact Florian who was responsible for selling out their squad. Nico, be calm! Be calm! Fuck! Calm! Florian! Florian! I've come for you, Florian. Oh, go away! Florian. Yes, Toti. Nico? What the hell are you doing here? What happened to you? Oh, I started working out. You know, toned up the... Uh... Florian? You used to work in the abattoir? Oh, don't remind me. Roman? You put on a few vanity pounds. Uh, what are you guys doing here? Why did you kick my door down? I've come uh... to ask you some questions. It wasn't you, was it? What was it, me? Who set us up? It was you or Darko! I thought it must be him! Oh my god! You think it was me? That's why you are here! You've come to kill me! Well, screw you, Nico Bellic and fatty Roman! It wasn't me! It wasn't! I wouldn't do that! Ah. Can we stop with the fat jokes, Florian? It's Bernie now! After I came here, I wanted a complete change, so I became Bernie Crane. I'm sorry about the fat thing. You're still kind of cute, 
<laughs> Gee, thanks. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a lifestyle coach, and I teach an aerobics class, and I'm in love. He's married. It's so doomed. And he's in politics. He's the deputy mayor. <laughs> Bryce Dawkins? But he's so at the family values. Oh, uh, well, that's just politics. Where is Darko? Dead, I hope. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I heard he was still in Europe or Switzerland or somewhere. But then I heard that you had joined the circus, so information can be unreliable. We have to find him. We have to find him. I think he's a bit freaked out. I guess he thought seeing you would answer some questions. So I see. Well, it's great to see you guys. We must do brunch. Sure. See you later, Florian. Bernie! Frustrated and restless, Roman would comfort his cousin and assure him that should he ever manage to actually locate the man that he now knew had sold him out, Darko Brevich, Roman would once again be there for him. However, Roman would also encourage Nico to try and move on, if possible, despite knowing how difficult it was, knowing from recent experience just how detrimental holding onto grudges could be for just about everyone involved. Around this time, Roman would use some of the money that he'd won during his recent hot streak to presumably buy a replacement ring for the one that was destroyed at his Hove Beach apartment, and finally propose marriage to Mallory Bardas, who would accept, with the two setting a wedding date for some time later that year. Nico would indeed eventually manage to locate Darko Brevich thanks to his contacts at United Liberty Paper and the IAA, and just as he'd promised, Roman would come with Nico to end things at Francis International Airport, where the agency's men covertly delivered Darko directly to Nico's feet. This is it. This is where it all ends. You remember me? Pusseme, ne pozna yet. I don't know you. Yes, you do. I'm the one who survived. <laughs> Nico. Hello. Reci mi zašto. Zašto? Zato što smo bili prijatelji. Svi smo odrasli zajedno. Mitar. Dragan. Goran. Mio. Mogo da nastavim. Sfio! Huh? We were friends, but I had other friends! Friends that Goran and his guys killed. My fucking neighbors! Because of what? Because of shit! Lies! Fucking lies! So that makes it okay? To stab your friends in the back? When everything you believe is shown to be shit, you make strange choices. Fuck yes. you! Strange choices? How much? <laughs> A thousand. <laughs> you killed my friends for one thousand dollars. How much did you charge to kill someone? You ruined me, you fuck! I needed the money. I had problems. You're a fucking junkie! Kill me then! You fucking hypocrite. Trust me. You'll be doing me a favor! Ah! Nico, come on. Let's go. Let him suffer. He knows what he did. He doesn't look like he enjoys life too much. Hey, come on. What became of Darko Brevich remains entirely unclear. No official records of Brevich being abducted by the agency exist, and all personnel associated with the incident have denied any involvement entirely. On top of this, Brevich's own country was notoriously bad at keeping records on its own citizens, and as a result, there is effectively no one else in America, besides Nico and Roman, who truly know what happened that night on the airport tarmac. 
Afterwards, Roman would assure Nico that they were family and that he would always be there for him, reminding him that his wedding was fast approaching, and with his revenge quest finally concluded, encouraged his cousin to try and finally move on as things started to improve for both of them, or so it seemed. The following events are where things become even more difficult to report on properly, though. Due to the criminal nature of almost everyone involved, Nico's association with cryptic and secretive government agencies, and the city's general apathy towards the many crimes committed on its streets on a daily basis, we have not been able to confirm with any degree of certainty exactly what happened on the day of Roman and Mallory's wedding. Some of the witnesses we interviewed claimed that a pudgy Italian-American man fired a burst of machine gun fire into the crowd as they exited the church, while others claimed that a struggle ensued between Nico and a Russian assassin that was blending in with the crowd, and everyone agrees that someone was indeed killed that afternoon. What they did not agree on was who. Oh, time to preen like a peacock! Look at you in those fancy clothes, Nico! Trying to upstage the broom on his wedding day? <laughs> Let's get me married! I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Mwah. Ah. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Wonderful! Oh, okay. Yes, I did it! Yes? Okay, thank you. A gift from Dmitry Raskolov. Oh my god! Get up, man. Get up. Oh, Gotta man. get you out of here, man. Police have so come. Don't worry, man. Me find him each and me call you. Leave. Okay. According to most of the people that we spoke with, it was Nico's girlfriend and sister to the Irish gangster Patrick Packy McCreary, Kate McCreary, who was killed. Confusingly, though, many of the people we spoke to actually claimed that it was Roman himself who was killed when the supposed Russian assassin accidentally fired his weapon, killing Roman almost instantly. We attempted to find any official records on the incident, listings for Roman Bellic in Liberty City in the present day, and even reached out personally to the McCreary family to try and confirm or deny Kate's death, but we had no luck whatsoever. Perhaps the only people who will ever truly know what happened that day are those directly involved, but at least according to my team's investigations, we believe that the more likely outcome was the death of Kate McCreary, which would mean that Roman Bellick is still very likely alive to this day, and perhaps, finally, living the American dream. There are even unconfirmed reports that Roman and Mallory eventually had a baby girl, whom they named Kate. She told me to leave it. I thought I had. I thought it was over. It's never over, Aya. Nico, you can't blame yourself. Of course I can. She's easy, dead. Easy, 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 Aya, bring her, Easy. Calm down, man. Calm down. Nico, you have to get out of here. Yes, go on, man. Go. go on, man. We have to leave, man. Just leave. Get out of here. Go. We take care of this, man. Okay, leave. okay. Roman Bellock was an eternal optimist, a charismatic and confident smooth talker, and a loyal, loving friend and husband. Despite growing up surrounded by war, poverty, abuse, and alcoholism, or perhaps because of it, Roman would develop a thick skin, or at least grow so accustomed to tragedy and misfortune that he no longer saw the point in complaining about it. Even as a young man in what is modern-day Serbia, Roman saw himself as a ladies' man, and a happy-go-lucky antidote to his cousin Nico's more grim and serious outlook, a divide that would only grow more prominent with time and experiences for both of them. Although a good friend and even capable of being a loyal boyfriend when sufficiently in love, Roman Bellick was more than almost anyone else around him, driven by a need to accumulate wealth and move up in the world. 
an attitude that he maintained for years despite seeing little progress towards this goal, even if eventually he would arguably reach the point that he'd so desperately tried to get to for his entire life. Because of this constant desire to get richer and live the American dream as he saw it, Roman would develop a crippling gambling addiction, one which landed him and his cousin Nico in trouble a number of times, and one which constantly held him back from re-establishing a solid foundation after being chased out of Hove Beach, until Roman's incredibly lucky hot streak, which saw him earn enough money to buy several new cars and a luxury condo like he'd always bragged about. Due to his connections to his cousin Nico, as well as men like Jacob Hughes, Brucey Kibbutz, and even Dmitry Raskolov, Roman was not, however, completely innocent of any wrongdoing in the eyes of the American justice system. Although his list of crimes pales in comparison to the likes of his cousin, he was nonetheless guilty of several crimes, which we were able to confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt. Although unsurprisingly, much like his cousin, he never saw any jail time or suffered any real consequences from the state for his mostly minor infractions. He was most notably guilty of frequently participating in illegal gambling rings both in person and online, but perhaps most egregiously was a direct accessory to murder several times due to his association to Nico and to a lesser extent, Brucey Kibbutz. America is a dangerous place, folks. Even for the average American, and especially for the average American immigrant, finding your way in this chaotic, capitalistic nightmare can seem nearly impossible, let alone achieving greatness and living the elusive American dream that everyone seems to talk about. Stay indoors, people. You never know if the patrons at your local incredibly suspicious-looking dive bar will turn out to be mobsters who are also secretly working for the government. Watch your back out there. I'm your host, Guinness Walker, and this has been the Season 4 premiere of Grand Theft Auto Biographies. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all again very soon.